On October 3, 1974, the bodies of 16-year-old Donald Barton and 18-year-old Peter Zito were discovered at the Oak Hills Recreational Center in Aloha by a newspaper delivery driver in the early hours of the morning. The residents of the peaceful neighborhood were left shaken and confused, struggling to understand the act of brutality that had occurred on their streets. The shock waves of the senseless crime reverberated throughout the city, and for years, detectives were baffled as to who the culprit behind this act could be. Who could have killed these innocent teenage boys? What could be the reason behind this gruesome murder? Welcome back to Cold Case Files, where we unravel the secrets of the unknown. Today, we'll delve into a case that remained unsolved for 48 long years until justice was finally served in 2022. But first, if you are new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, please consider clicking the subscribe button as it helps us and motivates us to create more content for you. So, without further ado, let's dive right into this mystery. Today, our story takes us to Aloha, an unincorporated community nestled between Beaverton and Hillsboro in Oregon. Despite being unincorporated, Aloha offers all the conveniences of a bustling city, including a post office, library, and schools. Golf enthusiasts can tee off at the prestigious Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club, known for its breathtaking views and top-notch facilities. Meanwhile, beer aficionados can head to the 649 Tap House and Bottle Shop to try out new brews from its selection of 20 taps of craft beer and kombucha. For gamers, Rainy Day Games offers a variety of children's games, strategy games, and disc golf products. But it was here in this sleepy community that a senseless act of violence took place in 1974. Donald Barton was born in 1959 in Aloha, an unincorporated community in Oregon. His mother's name was Irene Barton. He went to Aloha High School and used to live with his family. Barton was a great hockey player and used to play for his high school. Barton also used to work at bustling Black Angus restaurant part-time and at night he worked at recreational center. Peter Zito was born in 1957 in Aloha. He was a student of Aloha High School. Zito too had an interest in ice hockey and used to practice it whenever he had time. Zito also used to work at the recreational center at night with Barton. Not much is known about his personal history, but an interview with his elder sister, Barbara Zito, sheds light on his personal life. According to those who knew him best, he used to cherish the simple joys of life. Zito was a gentle boy who had a deep affection for his 1956 Oldsmobile and the four feline members of his family. Though he had dropped out of Aloha High School and taken up a job as a dishwasher, he held on to aspirations of obtaining his diploma through Portland Community College. It's a reminder that even in tragedy, there are stories of ordinary people with dreams and passions that deserve to be remembered. On the quiet evening of 3rd October 1974, two boys, Donald Barton, who was 16 at the time, and Peter Zito Jr., who was 18, were working on Zito's 1956 Oldsmobile car at 2 a.m. in the Oak Hills Recreation Center parking lot. They had no idea that it would be their last night on Earth. As they tinkered with the engine of the car, an unknown assailant approached them and murdered them in cold blood by shooting them both. What should have been a routine night turned into a nightmare for the families and loved ones of these teenagers. The next morning, the horror was discovered by an Oregonian newspaper delivery driver who stumbled upon the crime scene. The bodies of the two boys lay lifeless, almost as if time had stood still. The senseless violence had robbed them of their youth, their dreams, and their future. The newspaper delivery driver, with shaking hands, called the police and reported what he had seen at the crime scene. Within minutes, sirens were blaring as detectives and forensic investigators arrived. The gruesome sight left the investigators reeling with shock and disbelief. 
but without wasting any time they started the inspection of the crime scene carefully and with a closer inspection it was clear that Donald Barton had been working on the 1956 Oldsmobile in the parking lot under the hood of a car when he was ruthlessly shot in the back of his head. His body was found slumped over the open hood of the car as if he had been taken by surprise while working on the engine. Next to the Oldsmobile lay the body of Peter Zito Jr., who likely got out from the back seat of the car to see what had happened to Donald and was shot in the forehead. He had been found lying on the ground next to the driver's door. The proximity of the two bodies suggested that the killer had struck without warning and that the victims had been unable to defend themselves against the attacker. After gathering all the information from the crime scene, the investigators then interviewed anyone who had been near the recreation center on the night of the murders. They followed up on every possible lead, no matter how insignificant it might have seemed. They asked everyone who lived nearby if there were any screams that they heard or any abnormal activity that they encountered on the night of the murder. The investigators worked tirelessly to gather any leads that could help them solve the case. They found that the teenage boys were shot in the head with a 22 caliber gun. As their investigation proceeded, they learned that Barton had a rivalry with a 17-year-old co-worker named Chris at the bustling Black Angus restaurant in Hillsboro. Nobody quite knew what the root of their feud was, but it was evident that there was tension in the air between the two of them. Despite Chris being the prime suspect in the minds of many, the police had to move carefully in their investigation because they knew they could not risk making any mistakes. Investigators thought Chris had a motive for the murder, but without any concrete evidence, they decided to pursue another suspect. During the investigation of the Oak Hill murders, a man came forward and informed the investigators that he had witnessed an assault on Joseph Amir Wilson at the recreation center on the night of the murder. Investigators believed that Wilson could have mistaken the boys for someone else and shot Zito and Barton in retaliation for the assault. The case of the Oak Hills double murder took a puzzling turn when Joseph Amir Wilson, who was 18 years old and also a student of Aloha High School, was arrested and charged with the brutal killings of Donald Barton and Peter Zito Jr. As investigators delved deeper into the case, they stumbled upon a cache of weapons and knives at the home of Wilson. More than 100 knives and an array of guns were found during a search of his residence. Among the weapons was a loaded 38 caliber gun hidden under Wilson's pillow. When investigators questioned him about the weapons, Wilson explained that they belonged to his late father. While his explanation was being investigated, all the guns were sent for testing and it was revealed that none of the guns were a match for the one used in the brutal murders of Zito and Barton. The investigation continued as they tried to piece together the mystery of who was responsible for the heinous crime. While Wilson vehemently denied any involvement in the crime, the investigators were not ready to release him and continued their investigation. The more investigators delved into the case, the more they began to question whether Wilson was truly guilty. As the case proceeded, Wilson's defense team presented a compelling argument that he was not responsible for the deaths of Barton and Zito Jr. The prosecution's case was built on circumstantial evidence and the fact that there was no direct proof linking Wilson to the crime. Despite the doubts and the lingering questions, Wilson was eventually released. Many people in the community were left with a sense of unease, wondering if the killer was still out there, walking amongst them. Initially, investigators had suspected Chris due to his tension with Barton at their workplace, bustling Black Angus restaurant in Hillsboro, but didn't interrogate him as he was under 18. They focused on Wilson, another suspect, but when he was found innocent, this brought their attention back to Chris. This time, they investigated Chris further. When Chris was arrested for theft, the investigators found a 22 caliber gun in his car, sparking new hope for a break in the case. The gun was then sent for testing to see if it was the same gun used in the murder of the two boys. Despite the promising lead, 
the gun could not be matched to the bullets at the crime scene, once again leaving investigators at a dead end. As the months turned into years, the case went cold and the families of the victims were left with no answers and no justice. The case remained unsolved, leaving everyone in the doubt of the truth about what happened on that fateful night and if it would ever come to light. The Washington County Sheriff's Office was determined to close this cold case and decided to reopen the investigation in 2022 and rerun ballistics of the 22 caliber gun that had been used to shoot the two innocent teenage boys, Barton and Zito. The detectives had suspected Chris back then, but they couldn't match the gun found in his possession to the murder scene. However, with advances in forensic technology, with congruent matching cells technology, they finally confirmed that the same gun was used to commit both murders and that it had a match in the system that had been used to carry out another murder in 1979. When police looked into the owner of who this gun was, they were shocked at the identity of the owner. It was none other than Chris, the teenager who police had suspected all those years ago. Investigators now took an in-depth look into where Chris was now to see what he had done in the years following the murders. Mark Allen Chris, finally identified as the culprit for the double murder case, was 65 years old now and was living in Aloha, the small community that was located 12 miles west of Portland. The story of the 22 caliber gun used during the murder of Donald Barton and Peter Zito Jr. took a dark turn when it was discovered that it had been used in another gruesome killing. In 1974, when Chris was released by the investigators as no match was found from the ballistics of the gun, the gun was returned to him and he then carried it with him to the Fort Lewis United States Army base in Washington. It was there that Chris used the same weapon to murder his commanding officer, Sergeant Jacob Kim Brown, on 8th October 1979, almost five years to the date that Barton and Zito were killed. Chris shot his boss in the head five times over a petty argument, according to police reports. The cadet had damaged Brown's car and instead of paying for repairs, he chose to take his life when they got into an argument. Chris was sentenced to 35 years in jail for the murder of Sergeant Brown. However, fate had a different plan for him. He was released after just 12 years on parole in 1988, a decision that did not sit well with the family of his victim. But this time, in 2022 when the case reopened, he was finally out of luck and when the match was found, it was announced that this was the same 22 caliber gun that was used in 1974 to kill Zito and Barton at the recreational center. Chris, who had been living in Aloha, a small community located 12 miles west of Portland, was arrested on 2nd November 2022 and charged with two counts of second degree murder. The news of his arrest sent shockwaves throughout the town and people could not believe that justice had finally been served after all these years. The arrest of Chris and the confirmation of the gun match marked a historic moment with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives describing it as the oldest known match nationwide that they have ever confirmed. It was a long-awaited moment for the families of Donald Barton and Peter Zito Jr., who had waited for almost five decades for justice to be served. The reopening of this case and the arrest of the suspect was a testament to the hard work and dedication of the detectives who had never given up on bringing the killer to justice. It also gave hope to other families of victims of cold cases that justice may still be possible no matter how long it takes. The families of the victims have been waiting for this moment for decades, and their unwavering devotion to finding justice for their loved ones has finally paid off. The sheriff's office wanted to recognize their commitment and the courage it took to keep fighting for so many years. However, in their quest for justice, the sheriff's office inadvertently wronged an innocent man. Joseph Amir Wilson was arrested and charged for the murders just hours after they happened, but it was clear he was innocent. The charges against him were dropped, but the damage had been done. 
The sheriff's office formally apologized to any relatives of Wilson for this injustice in hopes that someday they can make a personal, direct apology. The case was a team effort with multiple agencies working together to bring closure to the families and justice for the victims. The Oregon State Crime Lab, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, the ATF, and the CID all played a crucial role in solving this case. The Sheriff's Office hopes that the families of the victim can find peace now that the killer has been brought to justice. The pain of losing a loved one never truly goes away, but knowing that the person responsible has been held accountable can provide some solace. In the news conference, Sheriff Pat Garrett stepped up to the podium, his eyes scanning the room until they fell on the families of the victims. His heart went out to them, knowing that their pain had been a constant companion for over 48 years. I want to acknowledge the loss of your loved ones many years ago and what you've had to endure waiting for today, he said, his voice firm yet sympathetic. One of the family members, Peter Zito's sister, Barbara Zito, couldn't help but remember her brother as the happy-go-lucky kid he was before his life was tragically cut short. Tears threatened to spill from her eyes as she listened to the sheriff's words. He was just a happy kid, and it was terrible when I heard he was gone, she whispered to herself. The news of Chris's arrest brought a sense of relief, but also a flood of questions. The families of the victim left the news conference with mixed emotions, grateful for the long-awaited justice, but also aware that the pain of losing their loved ones would never fully go away. The journey to closure was a long and difficult one, but they could finally take comfort in knowing that the killer was behind bars. It is chilling to think that the case of Donald Barton and Peter Zito remained unsolved for over 48 years. But thanks to the dedication and persistence of law enforcement and forensic investigators, justice was finally served. It is a reminder that no matter how long it takes, the truth will always come to light. Stay tuned for more intriguing mysteries and unsolved cases on Cold Case Files.